G'day, I'm Ash. In War Thunder's release of D Danger Zone update, 33% of the content here was premium. Most of the aircraft were copy-paste, with one major addition, the F-14. And whilst heaps of people have been calling this patch pay-to-play, other creators have mentioned that they are not as enthusiastic for this major patch as per the normal. It got me thinking, though, about War Thunder's position in the marketplace and what it has to offer versus the limited competitors in the vehicle combat market. Now, obviously, War Thunder is free to play. The way that they make their money is through premium vehicles, golden eagles via in-game premium currency, tied to an economy which is remotely free to play. And while it was released in November 1st, 2012, the platforms that it's available are, well, Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation, and Xbox, and various other different sort of smaller consoles. Which I think is quite interesting, the, sort of the, the width of this sort of game, and the impact that it has in the vehicle combat sim, because there's no other game like this one. And as a result, I mean, the closest competitor is probably World of Tanks, although that in itself could be split to several different categories. There is Gunner Heat PC, there is Steel Gear, there is IL-2, there is DCS, a bunch of other more flight sim orientated sort of vehicle based uh, sort of games, but a lot of them don't offer the same experience in an arcade simulator like War Thunder, and at least free to play and as accessible as War Thunder is. Got me thinking. What would happen if War Thunder, instead of being free to play, was pay to access like a regular $60 game? Now, this presents several scenarios uh, for us today. First of all, being that the company would have to restructure itself completely, the way that it markets itself, the way that it operates as a company, and it would have to focus more on marketing to try and sell the game as a complete product. There probably wouldn't be as many sales from microtransactions or as, well, purchases in ga for in-game items. And because of the company restructure, that meant that the whole entire game would also have to be rebuilt from scratch, which means that essentially it wouldn't be War Thunder free to play, it'd be War Thunder 2.0, except this time it cost $60 out the gate. Now, that would be quite interesting. What kind of perks would that give you? Well, honestly, a, a lesser grind to, to an extent where it is actually playable. No in-game premium, uh, premium currency uh, and certainly no $60 premium packs for vehicles that could be considered add-ons or DLCs, which again <laughs> is another convoluted way that, you know, multiplayer games deal with the the aspect of you know monetization obviously this means that vehicles could be easier to access or maybe cost less in overall in order for you to play but then would it really be war thunder without the the money making side of things and then how do you restructure the game to be actually profitable and playable without the free to play aspect do you have groups of vehicles that are just unlocked for you randomly at a time or do you have them unlock for a small smaller price instead of what they cost currently there's so many questions and so many different variables which is why i think this question is should be asked how would development then go you would then proceed instead of having dev blogs based on the newer content which would probably still continue it wouldn't be so hype based rather it would be here is the new content this is what we're delivering uh, some of it's free some of it goes into maybe a year pass or maybe they put it into uh, dlcs or some other sort of contrived thing a bit like for example american truck simulator where you have the expansions to different states although there isn't really a a world map in, in war thunder that that idea of expansions uh, isn't exactly new and monetary practices here at least you could go full ea or electronic arts or whatever type of company as well and go full beans into the uh, into the monetization with skins and and loot boxes and things as well but since star wars battlefront was a bit of a flop at least back then yeah, sometimes it is a bit convoluted to really do uh, and, and go that, you know, push the game to that extreme when you're paying for a $60 game and then on top of it you have a, a premium bundle that, that, that's, that now makes the game $90 yeah, and then $120 on top of that. It just gets a bit expensive. So, how would the tech trees look? The, obviously, there'd still be premium vehicles, whether or not they're included in a DLC bundle, whether or not there are separate bundles you can still purchase. 
I would just reduce the price of them, uh, particularly instead of having them for $60, maybe you have them for $30 instead, uh, and, and so on and so forth, and you move it that way, because you've already paid an initial uh, buying price to get into the game. Maybe Matchmaker looks a little bit different, or just some form of different thing. Maybe it's a little bit more like Battlefield, for example. But, again, then the, the begs the question, are they going to drop the whole Matchmaker thing and let us have community servers? Would there be uh, more regions or, you know, custom servers that people could actually operate? It's a whole host of just strange questions that are unanswered with this proposition. And it's unlikely that we'll ever see a, well, a paid version of War Thunder in the market space anytime soon. Going back to one of my other favourite games that I like playing on an occasional basis, uh, that being Isle 2. The way that their expansions work is you buy a DLC for a set price, you have access to the regular set of aircraft, and then there's a collector's edition which adds two premium aircraft with that, and you get access to those aircraft, and then they'll also put up uh, a separate vehicle you can purchase on its own as its own item, so it's $9 or $10, whatever, and then that can be a whole entire expansion, whether it's a new map or a new continent or new, new features or something like that. Maybe they could do something along those lines but it's an interesting thought process what do you think would happen if war thunder was to be you know, switched from free to play to 60 us dollars speaking of money if you want to save three percent off on any purchase in war thunder my affiliate link is in the description down below thank you very much for watching my name is ash and i'll catch you in a video soon right time to go research some other wacky thought experiments